Okay, uh, there's been some discussion on the Chasky um, recently regarding semaphores and the mechanisms. Now, uh, about 1980, so well, 30 years ago, I decided to make semaphores. I was going to market them, a scale semaphore. I wanted to, I would say, not a completely true scale semaphore, but a very close scale semaphore. And I had made up patterns and so on. And then some other guys come out with this here, basically three light bulbs on a pole. And, uh, you know, not very nice looking in my opinion. So I gave up on it because I figured, well, this guy's selling them. I'll never uh, get a market for them because nobody, would, nobody seems to care that much about the scale. So I gave up on it, but someday I'm going to, uh, when I get some of my other projects cleared up in the next couple of years, I, I plan on bringing out a, a semaphore. And my thoughts were to make a semaphore for your railroad room because it seems to me, back to the, the gauge one, I just saw a friend of mine had a $20,000 big boy. Beautiful. Scale, everything, little boom, beautiful. But, 20 grand. Do you get that for some of this stuff? I don't know. Those guys seem to want to spend the money, so... I'm going to start making some railroad type things uh, for your, your train room. And I thought I'd have the semaphore there and animate it. But anyway, discussion was this time on a, set, on a, on a chasky regarding the mechanism and how to operate it. And my friend Ralph DeStephanis, God bless him, has passed away. He died at an early age, 35 years old. He'd have been, well, he'd have been almost 60 today. Uh, he made this up. It's a very simple relay system with an electric motor here. It's a 4 RPM motor. 4 RPMs. It's a gear motor. I got it from Granger. It's 110 volts. But you could you know, do something different with that if you're going to use it outdoor. But it's just three relays. I have the drawings at home. And these switches that you see right here just represent the track circuit. On the track circuit you have one common a wire and then the the the, the um, uh, wheels make the circuit across the track right so this is a, basically the same thing as throwing a switch you have one common wire and then when you throw the switch it makes contact so the first initial contact the semaphore would go to red now he's got the 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 the, the blade here the semi the 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 um, simulated blade backwards but you get the point so now, it, it, by throwing both of these, it makes contact across. And the semaphore is a scale speed. It's going to go to red. Okay? And as you're going down the track, you clear the first block. It's going to go to yellow. Then clear that block. Going to go back to green. Okay, now. Nothing against you guys. Your computers, semi this, that. Stepper motors, blah, blah, blue. All this electronic bull crap. Very simple wiring. Anybody with half a brain could figure that out. Okay? Now you want to use all that stuff? That's fine with me. You don't have to use these huge relays that Ralph used, but it's some smaller ones. They make smaller ones. That, that could be an electronic relay. They have small ones that you can buy. Uh, even the types of relays that come off for automotive, those little relays like that would work. Well, of course, they're 12 volt. These are 110 volts, so you'd have to come up with that. But the basic circuit, I have that. Now, let's go to the semaphore blades themselves. Here's the head. Now, these are core prints. This is a core print, this is a core print, this is a core print. But the basic thing in the middle here is what goes on a one inch, it's designed to fit on a one inch steel or if you want aluminum pipe. Then I have also the different finials. There's a finial here, fit, fits on a one inch pipe. It would, a small piece of pipe and then it would set up on top of that. That's one. This is a plain one, a little small one, and then I have the old time one that actually is designed to fit, if you machine this out, is designed to fit, if you notice, there's pads here. You machine those pads and then it sits on top of that. And uh, then uh, there's also this cat pattern here, which is for, for the, for the uh, it would go right here for the light. Okay, now let's talk about the blades. Here's a blade. Here's a blade right here. Goes like this. In there. So it goes, you know, 
like this. And then, of course, your blade, whatever you want, how you want to make that's up here. That's a, a upper quadrant. And then we have a lower quadrant, which would, I think it goes this way. Forget how I figured it out. But it goes like this. So it would be green, yellow, red. Green, yellow, red. Like that. And that's a, a lower quadrant. And then I was coming up with ideas of putting two on a head and so on. Now what I would do is use this vertical shaft motor, run a shaft, have all the mechanism down in the bottom of the base, run a, run a, uh, a shaft up, quarter inch, three eighths rod, with a, a bevel gear on the top, you know, 90, making it 90 degrees into this. I have it all set up for that. And you have to machine this, of course, and everything, and then that's how you do it. Now, we also have the lenses. I've had these for 25 years. This is a smooth lens. I have a Fresnel lens. This is inch and a half scale. They fit on this. They're designed to fit on this. Right there. And there's a little rim that goes around that with five bolts. And then I used an O-ring. I bought an O-ring the right size to fit on there to kind of cushion it a little bit so that when it goes together it holds it. You know, it's just, a, just a, like a gasket. Uh, I guess it's designed to go this way. I don't forget how I did it. But, you know, it just gaskets that on and makes it nice and tight. And um, you use the clear Fresnel, the clear one, to put on wherever the light source is going to be. So that projects. And these actually magnify. They're not just a bunch of circles in there. They're actually magnified. These lenses are the best on the market. You can't get any better than this. But nobody seems to want to buy them. So guess what? I got 5,000. 5,000 of every color of every size ranging from inch and a half all the way down to five eighths. And you know what? They're going to sit right in the boxes over there. Because you guys want to play with that plastic stuff, making little things and uh, uh, polishing all that? Good. You do it. I got them right here. I want to use them for my special special projects. Here's a, a, a three-quarter one. I have five eighths. I have one inch. I have inch and a half. And I have a, a five eighths, three-quarter, one inch, and inch and a half in all colors. And and then for and only the Fresnel or in uh, or the smooth ones are in the bigger ones because I didn't care about the other the other uh, stuff. So uh, anyway, that's that's what I had made up for. Uh, oh, by the way, this is another head that I made, and then this is a this is called out a snow hood. I made that for the guys on the west coast, but I was going to take take this on put the three hoods there, and then I have it set up for my one inch lenses, and then this is set up for three different. Um, three different lights and then it sits on a one inch pole. Now the nice part about this is on the back you see this part right here you drill that out and you put a clear piece of um, plexiglass in there. You don't have to at all. You could just leave it open but bugs could get in there so you want to glue it something in there if you're going to use them outside. What that does is when you pass the signal signals here like this and you pass it you look back, the engineer could look in there, it's called the telltale, and that tells you whether the signal has turned, actually turned red. So that, that's an indication that you have a red, red board behind you, which you want. So that's another little thing I added. And uh, then I have variations on some of this stuff, I have other things. And I never made the box, I make the box one of these days. I don't want to copy what the guys on the West Coast done, because they'll say I copied them, but they copied it from Union Switch and Signal, Swiss Vale, PA. Uh, anyhow, that's it for semaphores, and uh, somewhere down the road, I'm going to make some nice semaphores and have them on this for a display. You could use them outdoor, but primarily they're going to be used for a display. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we're going to go back to working on our cars. We're, we're in the back here at the at the office, uh, Fugitive Recovery. That's what we're doing, bail enforcement. And uh, so, if you're out on bail. Don't look for the dog. Look for me. See you again on the next video.